We'll be right back. We're going to meet uh, a man running for the United States Senate in Pennsylvania. And boy, does he seem to have Kathy Barnett's number. Take a look at this. At a recent U.S. Senate debate, candidate Sean Gale called out Kathy Barnett for playing the race card on the campaign trail. And I think it's very disingenuous for Kathy Barnett to pretend that she's not running a campaign purely based on identity politics. I'll prove it this way. There's seven candidates running for this race. He's not afraid to uh, go there. Sean Gale, Republican candidate for the United States Senate, joins us next. Thank you, sir. We'll be right back. Hey, we have a very competitive race for the United States Senate in Pennsylvania. The Republicans, uh, we have several candidates, including our next guest, Sean Gale. He is a Republican. He's a health care attorney and businessman. This is his first time running for statewide office. He made quite a splash in some of the debates. Uh, Mr. Gale, welcome to Newsmax. How are you? Thank you for having me on the program. I greatly appreciate it. You bet. Hey, do me a favor. First off, make the case for yourself. Why should you be the next U.S. Senator from Pennsylvania? So when I announced my candidacy for this race, I did it because Pennsylvania cannot afford another Pat Toomey, another backstabbing rhino in Washington who lets us down time and time again. And we had that with our own spectrum before him, and we have it with him now. So my issue isn't just the Democrats. It's those weak Republicans who have failed us time and time again, and Pat Toomey is one of them. And I'm very concerned we're going to get Pat Toomey 2.0, and we cannot afford that in Pennsylvania. Now, one thing clear for your listeners, I am not another Pat Toomey. All right. So look, everyone's talking about Kathy Barnett right now. She's shown some momentum in the polls. Anything can happen in politics. You're not out of this, Sean, by any means. But uh, give us your sense of Kathy Barnett. Who is she? And... Um, what do you think is going to happen here? Well, I, it kind of leads in with just exactly what I was saying. We can't afford another Pat Toomey. And when I look at what's happening right now, the Club for Growth, which is, which is a PAC that Pat Toomey chaired for years, just dumped $2 million into the Barnett campaign this last week. So that tells you exactly what she is, Toomey 2.0, and we can't afford that. And I've been on the campaign trail with her, and I'll tell you what, her whole campaign is based on one thing, and that's identity politics. And there's a video, it's shocking. She says to her supporters to pounce on your neighbor, hand them a palm card, and if they say they don't want it, shame them and call them racist. Now, that doesn't sound like a Republican. That sounds like a left-wing Democrat. And anybody who campaigns like a Democrat is going to vote like a Democrat. So I'm very concerned about Kathy Barnett. Well, you mentioned that clip. And uh, why, don't we, uh, why don't we show it to everybody? You just summarize it accurately, perfectly, but it is, something, it is something to see. So let's take that, uh, that moment when she's uh, at that rally talking about her uh, yard signs. Get my yard sign, get my palm card. If you're really hesitant about speaking, get the palm card, pounce on your neighbor and just hand them the card. And if they say, no, I don't want it, shame them. Really? You don't want to support the first black person? Are you a racist? Say it to them. That's what they say to you. Why do you think I put my little black face on my yard sign? <laughs> that is, uh, that, that does sound like a Democrat. Completely unacceptable. We cannot have that anywhere in politics. We should not have candidates weaponizing race against voters, especially their neighbors. Now, you say her whole campaign is about identity politics. Well, let's take a look at her resume for a moment. And I, quite frankly, think you're on to something because her resume is remarkably thin. These are the actual words from her resume. There's <laughs> veteran, conference speaker, adjunct professor. No further details. When, where, what, nothing. nothing. What do you, I mean, what do you make of the lack of specificity and the vagueness and the holes and the gaps what what's this happening? entire this entire primary kathy barnett has been treated with kid gloves but guess what when the general election comes the democrats take the gloves off it is going to be a brawl and she's not going to hold up and what we do know about her is for example she wanted to erect a statue of barack obama and this is during 2020 when donald trump was running against barack obama's vice president joe biden kathy barnett wanted to erect a statue of barack obama for one reason he was the first black president now, I was always raised, you judge somebody on the content of their character, not the color of their skin. But if you want to erect a statue of somebody purely based on the color of their skin, that's there's that's a word true. for that. That's racism. That's racist. Uh, because if we look at the content of character of Barack Obama, it does not deserve a statue. 
Certainly not. And talk about a guy who got places because of identity politics. And it does exactly. seem like she's playing, uh, taking the whole playbook, actually. You mentioned the petition to get that statue. I think we have a picture of a, the statue, the Emancipation Plaza. And yes, there was this petition. And let's go ahead and put that up on the screen if we have it. Uh, well, Kathy Barnett started this petition. And do me a favor, let's go ahead and take a look at specifically what it was calling for. Next up, it says, well, it basically says this will be a Barack Obama statue. And here we go. We propose erecting two new statues alongside the Emancipation Memorial statue. We recommend that one statue portrays our first African-American president, President Barack Obama. Have you met her in person? What is she like? I mean, quite frankly, this all seems rather weird. Unfortunately, I've had to see this for several years now because I live in the congressional district that she ran in in 2020, and she did the same exact thing. She tried to play the race card. In fact, that video was from 2020. That's when she did that. She just continues to do it. But it didn't work then. She went on to lose by 20 points. So it's actually nothing new as far as she's been doing this and been getting away with it for a long time. But in this last week, we're seeing a lot surface. And it's very, very concerning. And clearly, she's unelectable in the general election. But my biggest concern right now is Quick, all that quickly. money from the Toomey pack going into Barnett, it, the Club for Growth. That is a serious problem. We can't have another Pat Toomey. He voted yeah. against Trump. He voted against funding the border wall. We can't afford another Republican like that. I know the Club for Growth apparently has some problem with Trump all of a sudden. I don't know about that. But uh, Sean Gale, we appreciate you so much coming on. Uh, best Thank to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. You bet. Republican uh, running for Senate. Go to galeforsenate.com, G-A-L-E for Senate.com. Thank you, sir. We'll be right back.